So today we have Padma Priya here and I've persuaded him to give a demonstration because he made this beautiful composition yesterday. Look at it, with four Chinese elms and these lovely rocks. And it's a group planting, like growing on a rock uh, face. You do see this. I remember seeing it even in parts of Surrey, near Godalming, you see beech trees growing on rocks like this. So it is reminiscent of what you see in the countryside. So I persuaded Padmapriya to give us a demonstration of how he created this. So we're going to ask uh, Pad, as I call him, to explain what he's going to do. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, a little bit nervous this morning, so if I am an er, which is what my tendency is, do I do apologise. No, you don't have to. Okay. Uh, so yes, as Peter says, you will see this sort of thing uh, in the countryside. My inspiration from this is there's quite a few Roman roads around here that run out of London down to the south coast. And over years and years and years, uh, the trees that were on either side of these roads, the erosion wears away uh, all of the uh, soil around the roots and mm. exposes the roots in some quite amazing patterns. So, In fact, in East Grinstead, near the Meridian that's it. Centre. There yeah. are some beech trees which yeah. are just like this. Yeah, yeah. Tunbridge Wells also. Tunbridge Wells, yeah. You see beech yeah. trees like this. Yeah, high yeah. rocks at Tunbridge Wells, you'd see something very okay. similar to that, yeah. So uh, so my aim is to try and uh, create something similar to this. This one, uh, I believe we're doing uh, sets on, on online, yes. a kit online. So this is a 15 uh, pot. I'm not sure if that's inches. It's just a GRA 15, so look out for that 15 number. 15 means 15 go, so it's about 17 inches long. Okay, yeah, uh, so this is a 15, okay, uh, and it's got four trees in it. I know that that is an unlucky number. I know people will probably say <laughs> no, that it's... No, I don't uh, yeah. lucky and unlucky. It, it, I'd, nor do I, and uh, it looks right to me, so yeah, that's, that's why right. I've done it that way. Okay, we uh, have to break tradition. Yeah, we this one break. is a 17. Uh, a GRA 17. A bigger. So slightly bigger because I couldn't find quite such small rocks. So, so these are the mica pots we're using. These are the mica pots yeah. we're using. I think it's also safer to use it because if you use ceramic pot and using these heavy rocks, don't you think the chances of the ceramic pot well, the main problem, Breaking the main problem with fire. ceramic pots, from my perspective, is, is is that as soon as they're out in the frost, and these would be better outdoors, okay. uh, they're just going to break the pots. And I, I love, I love these yeah. pots anyway. And these are great okay. for landscapes. So uh, I've prepped my pot. You can do it however you want. I've done my staples the way I like it, and I've run through some wires for tying in stuff. I don't quite know where stuff is going, so I've just put a few in to try and. Um, cover my bases, I suppose, yeah. Um, and the other things that you're going to need is there's some clay. So this is just, uh, uh, this was just dug out of the ground uh, when we were repairing yes. our fence line. Yeah, because we have clear soil on the left. Yeah, so I've kept this. If you're in London, you get beautiful blue clay, uh, which is really lovely, but this is just what's local to here. We're on the green sand way, so it's quite a sandy sort of clay. And uh, obviously moss okay uh, to dress the tree when we've we're, we're finished so I've also got a collection of rocks okay in your kit your tree will come like this okay uh, in a plastic pot okay so the first thing to do is to remove all of the soil off of your roots okay I've done them already down here just to speed the process along but you'll you get the idea you've seen this many These times before they are Chinese elms, yes, you're correct. Okay, so my first thing to do is, is to start thinking about my rock formation. Um, now, uh, you could use something like this, <laughs> but this one is way too big for this. Okay, yeah, and you, yeah, you've got to be a weightlifter to move it around. So we won't be using that one, but this is sandstone. It breaks really easy. Um, you can cut it with a saw, an old saw. I wouldn't use your uh, parents' best saw. OK, um, but the best rocks generally are the ones that have frost cracked. OK, so I don't know if you can pick up that at the front there, but you've got these lovely striations in the rocks again. I talked about that in a previous video uh, we did. So I'm just going to start putting in some rocks where I think I might like them. OK, um, now, if these rocks weren't going to hold on their own weight, um, you will need to tie these in. OK, so the way you do that is, is you drill holes 
through your rock and then you fix them in almost like you would do a tree. But because I think the weight of this and because it's not going to be particularly tall, I mean, if I was doing one up here somewhere, then I would be tying the rocks in, but I'm not. So I'm going to, I think the weight will hold it down. So I'm just going to start placing some things in where I think they might go. Um, and just picking some of the nice rocks. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to try and layer things up. Now I'm doing this from the wrong side, so you're just going to have to bear with me, but I'm hoping that you'll just get a bit of an idea of how we would do it. So um, just getting a bit of an idea of where my rocks might go. Um, so Demonstrating from the back is very difficult. I can never do it. <laughs> yeah. I always work from the front and hence you see the back of my head. <laughs> So little things like this I think are really useful. So you can see this has got like an overlap on it. So we can overlap our rocks, something like that. So we can get some interesting features. So um, I'm, I'm gonna say that might be all right. I'll yeah, just have a quick look. Already. Yeah, okay, so I've got something to start with. Okay, so that's all I'm really looking for. I'm gonna build up on it as I go, but I've got something to start with. So um, I'm gonna start with my middle tree. Um, I've kind of pre-selected these. Now you're not so gonna be able to choose the middle tree. So uh, the middle tree, generally I pick the thickest one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it's always a safe bet. So in nature generally, uh, I've been told anyway, my experience from being a tree surgeon is, is the biggest trees tend to be towards the middle of a forest, the smaller trees towards the outside. So so um, that's why I'm looking for the ones that I think have got the thickest trunks on them. So I've got two to choose from down here. Um, and I think I'm probably going to go th with this one because it's just a little bit fuller in foliage. Okay, so I'm probably going to pick that one to start with. So now I'm thinking about, okay, so where am I going to put this? So for the time being, um, I think I'm just going to sit that there. Okay, um, just get a rough idea of what, I'd like that already, so I th I'm pretty sure that's where I'm going to leave that. So I think I can tie this in already. So again, I've got my guide wires. I'm looking for, sorry, my anchor wires. I'm looking for a thick-ish root. But the way you're putting it, you're making sure that the roots are going to f fill the pot. Yes. If you can turn it around, we can show yeah. because what's happening. Okay, so, so I've got quite a bit of space yeah, underneath here. Yeah. If I take that out, so the roots will fit See, I've got space. plenty of space and I've got a whole load of area down here that all these roots, okay. hopefully they'll all mesh together um, like a raft would do. Okay, so I think I'm going to go for that there. There's a lovely little hook there. I don't know if you can see that. If you came in there, Peter, there's a little hook there. So I'm just looking for places that I can pick my roots out. That root, I think, could even go over the top or maybe... Like a root of a yeah, yeah, it's it's... Some of them I'm hoping to get all the way over, but it just depends how how lucky we are. Okay, so I think that's a fairly good starter. So I'm going to tie this this um, this tree in. So try and get as much of the wire at the back as I can, so it's not going to show too much. Okay, so that's that's going to be that one there. Now you can see there's a gap there. So immediately I'm looking, thinking, okay, well, that, that looks a little bit too high. I haven't seen anything quite that high off the ground, but maybe it happens. So I'm just going to put another little rock underneath that. Maybe or two rocks, if they're two smaller rocks, maybe. So I'm just looking to build up, looking to see which rocks seem to fit the shape. So... Might even come down on that one. And so I'm rather than find one big rock to I the roots over, you're building up the smaller rocks. I, I find, yeah, I find it easier to use smaller rocks. Uh, you, you want a few big ones to start with, yeah. um, just to get you going. And that's got a nice little, yeah, I like that. That's got a good area there. It's, you can see, again, you might not be able to see that there, but you can see that just sits in that little groove there. So that's my first tree. I'm just going to leave that as it is for now get my next tree so again my next thickest tree is this one so uh, I've got a choice to make here this one's got lots of roots running right down Can now a close look at that tree? I yeah. should just mention that these elms are exposed root styles so they were uh, specially grown in the exposed root style so people can grow them in whatever way they want but we 
are exploiting the character of the exposed root to make this root over rock composition, which Padma Priya is very good at doing. So I'm going to place this one again. I've got a bit of a space here already. I can see where I want this one to go. So because I've tied that in, it's going to be a little bit trickier, but we'll get that in there. So something like that. I'm going to worry about the position of the trees a little bit later. So I want a slightly bigger rock this time. Maybe something that's too big. Maybe something like that. So, yeah, I'm just going to, But I don't want to... I, I try not to lose all of the characteristics of the... Of the roots, but you're going to see these from behind as well. So I'm working from both sides. Although there is a front, I am trying to get something that will look quite quite pleasant to the eye, even if it's yeah. So again, I'm going to wire this one in just to keep this in place. It's a bit tricky when your rocks are in there. <laughs> Again, we'll just tie that off. And I'm deliberately leaving these long because I may need to loop them round and tie them in or try another tree in with it or something like that. But just to give a... I'll tighten it all up once I've got everything in where I want it to be. So again, I might just slot another rock in there. So I'm just going to have a quick look from the front and you'll get to see what the back looks like at the moment. Yeah, they're not too bad. Yeah, looks nice on both sides. Yeah, it looks a little bit... looks a little bit... To uh, yeah, might try something like that maybe. So it's just to get a rough idea to start with anyway. So the main thing is just try and get your trees in, and then we'll uh, go from there. So again, then I'm now looking for my next tree. So I've got this one here, which has got a bit of give in the root system. So. I'm hoping that if I haven't ruined it too much, see that, I'm hoping that I can get this over one of these rocks and leave that in the front. So what I might do is just pick that rock up, wrap it round it and pop it back in. Try and get that round there, something like that. Yeah, I think I quite like that. I can see what I'm going to do with that from this side, I think. Yes, I'm going to leave those roots running down the front there. So eventually, I'm going to do something later on that's going to cover them over. But once the whole thing is settled in, you'll be able to start washing away the soil again, just like it would do in nature, um, and um, start exposing some of these roots, which hopefully would have thickened up a little bit more. So this tree, I was pretty sure I was just going to put straight in. Yeah, so this one can go straight in there. And then my final tree, which I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get in. I'm hoping to get this in here, something like that. So let's just have a quick look, see what that might look as a whole composition. No, don't like that. So that's not working for me. So what I'm going to do, I might just try something like that first. Yeah, it might be just that four's enough again, yeah. I mean, it quite often happens. I mean, I'll have that out there like that, I think, in the final, final knockings. Something like that. I like that, actually. I might try that, Peter. Just give it a go. Okay, so again, I've got some wires here, so I'm going to try and tie these in. So I'm leaving a little bit of give in these wires because then I can move the trees to the position I once want, once I've sort of backfilled it all. Um, that one I'm just going to loop around there like that. So I think that's got potential. I don't know that I need to um, do too much more with that at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck in the wires that I haven't used. Um, Have you tied all the trees in? Yep, they're all in, yeah. So now what I'm going to do is just backfill it with some soil, which we've got down here. So, I'll get my arm through. So I'm just literally just filling up my tray now. Just get that out of the 
away. So just massaging the, our standard mix. This is for deciduous outdoor. So I'd imagine that a kit would probably come with a bag of this. So we'll just do that. So just as you would do normally with just planting up trees, you're just massaging the soil in, firming everything up basically, so that what you don't want is something that's so loose that every time the wind blows, all of the fine roots that are developing just get ripped off because the whole thing's moving. So you need to try and get it quite tight. So normally I'd be for spraying this with water, but um, I'm just gonna work with it as it is for now. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's everything's starting to firm up as I start to press in more and more soil. So um, I've got a bit of a style going, uh, whether you like it or not, it's another no, that matter, but um, we, we uh, got something going. So now what I'm looking to do is just place in more rocks, just creating more of my landscape. Um, so these are smaller uh, off cuts, or bits that I've just smashed up. So I'm just laying them in at the moment, just to find a light or get an idea of where my design might end. And you're doing the back as well. So um, although most, you know, most bonsais do have a front and a back, you still want to be dressing the back as well because you never know, you might decide in a few years time that actually the back looks nicer than the front and you change the whole design. So, so that's what I'm doing as well. It also helps to cement everything together if there's, you know, you're jamming the rocks in. Okay, now you can see that those rocks are fairly loose at the moment and it doesn't really look particularly great, maybe, um, depending on your perspective. So this is where I'm gonna start using my clay. Now, this is clay, obviously, but this is not. This is clay mixed uh, roughly 50-50 with um, our Levington's compost. So clay, I believe, is largely inert. So there's no real nutrients in it. So by mixing in um, the uh, organic. yeah the organic stuff, it's going to help keep everything um, alive. But also what it's going to do is I'm just going to start using it now to cement my rocks in place. So this is what I'm really using this for on this occasion. So I can just start packing this in. Also keeps the rocks together. Keeps the rocks together. It's also going to act as the bed for putting moss on afterwards. Sorry. Hopefully, that is. So it's just going to start firming the whole thing up. Uh, that's the plan anyway. <laughs> I should just mention that traditionally this sort of thing, when the Japanese do their plantings uh, with clay, they get the clay from the rice paddy fields because when rice is growing in flooded fields, this, the soil is really like a thick clay and what is left in the paddy fields is quite nutritious but also very sticky. So that soil, I think it's called keto or something, or keto. -E All right, okay. Word. Yeah. And that is used in the same way that we're using it. But I've been using, as Pat says, this London clay. Parts of the country do have clay. And in our nursery here, we have what is called sandy loam. It's not exactly clay, but it's still quite sticky. So if we dig deep, you find the clay. Recently, we installed a ground source heat pump and the drilling rig drilled 160 meters in the ground and quite a lot of soil that came out was pure clay and rocks. So there was quite a lot of clay lying around. So it was. You go around the nursery, <laughs> mm. you collect that clay. So or you may be lucky and find clay. Yeah. 
So here you can see there's some exposed roots here. Yeah, so this yeah. again is what this um, clay is really good at doing, is I don't want any of these fine roots to dry out. Yeah. So by packing in a bit of clay over the top of it, it's going to seal the moisture in, so that, um, but not stop the water getting through. Oh. Um, again, it's just firming up my roots, holding everything in place, but it's also acting as a protection. So if it's and the water won't wash the clay off, I and not to start with, no. I mean, eventually you'll have to pick it out, but um, you know it, it won't wash it off to start with. No, I mean I, I've got some of these at home, and uh, I made one at the beginning of the year, and admittedly it's about you know three foot tall, and I've actually set trees on the top of it as well, but. Um, uh, that's still got all of the clay on it from the beginning part of the year, so uh, yeah, no problems really. So again, I'm just packing this in. And you can actually even set, because it won't get waterlogged so much as well, you can even set your roots into it a little bit again, so it's just all about holding everything so that the health of the tree doesn't suffer. Um, so just packing this in hiding any wires that I've put in the wrong... I mean, if I did this, I'd take a lot more time and I'd weave the wires through so that you couldn't see it and stuff like that. But, you know, for video purposes, it's obviously going to be a bit quicker than that. So, again, just packing this in. OK, so you can see what I've done along the back there now. So I'll work on the front whilst you're enjoying that side. <laughs> I think we're almost there. So again, I've, I've got these exposed roots out the front here. Now, I think that these are so fine that I'm just going to uh, I'm going to cover them with the moss to try and keep those wet. And I'm hoping that that will be sufficient. So rather than covering them with clay, I'm going uh, this sort of clay mix. So the clay is more or less like cemented the rocks together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I don't want to lose all of the definition of the rocks. So I might go back afterwards if I was doing this. Um, and had all the time in the world, I would then sort of almost carve into the clay to make them to make the clay look like rock, you know. Um, but hopefully, because we've used sandstone with sandy clay, we should get a pretty good, a pretty good effect um, without that, without having to cover it all. So, so we're getting there. So, and once you've got your uh, soil on. Uh, sorry, your clay on. Um, it looks a bit funny, so just rub, you know, just pack in some of your normal, um, oh, your normal uh, mix. You can just rub it into the clay, yeah, and it should just, it just helps to, you know, just brings it all together, really. Okay, so, right, so now that's, that's where I'm at. Um, it, hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of what you can do. So I'm just going to get rid of any excess soil that I don't need. So this rock, it's got a nice little thing going on at the front. I don't know what you call it, but I'm going to, you know, you don't want to bury all of your rocks. If you, particularly if you're like me who goes out hunting for decent bits of rock, you don't want to go and bury it all. So I'm just going to get rid of this extra I don't really need and I just hopefully I can expose some more of this rock a little undercut there it's nice I think so there you go you're getting a bit of an idea so now just as we would do normally uh, we just finish it off with uh, moss so so um, just pick and choose you don't you you don't want to cover the whole thing in moss, in my opinion, but you do want to dress all the sides. And the moss is as much there to keep the moisture in um, as it is to uh, um, you know, to act as an aesthetic. And different types of moss, so that's like a little clump moss. So I'm going to pick a place for that. So I think somewhere in there maybe. So again, it's contrast. So, you know, I, I spoke at length about contrast in one of the other videos we did on the um, ficus. So if you can get different types of moss, which um, have different colours to them, different uh, textures, all of that is going to add 
uh, to your design. So in nature, where the water would run, the silt would stay. So you can pretty much guarantee that um, that's where your moss is likely to grow. So when I was saying about carving out, you see I've lost a bit of definition of the rock there. So I'm going to take some of that extra clay out there that I don't think I really need. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much it. 